And now for today's Bible question. Today we have been learning about the riches that can be found in Jesus alone. We saw how God values marriage and children, and how a rich man could not give up his money to follow Jesus. We also learned that the true riches are not found in being number one, but are found by serving others in humility. It is far better to have eyes to see the riches that are in Christ than to be spiritually blind seeking riches that fade away. Someone might ask the question, do I have to give up all my possessions to follow Jesus faithfully? There is a sense in which we must be willing to give up everything that we hold dear in order to follow Christ, but that does not necessarily mean we all must sell all of our possessions. Clearly, if we all sold everything we had, then we would be left in a position of need and a burden to others. When Jesus asked the man to sell all of his possessions, he was testing his sincerity and his faith. If he really believed that eternal life was of more value than his money, he would have gladly parted with his money and possessions in order to gain eternal life. The trouble is he loved his money more than he loved God. He did not have faith enough to trust in the Lord for his care. Jesus will not call all of us to give up all of our possessions, but he will most certainly test our hearts to see whether our hope is in our wealth and possessions or in God alone. We should be able to truthfully say that all that we have belongs to the Lord, and he may take and use whatever he wishes for his purposes. The Lord knows that we have needs and is glad to supply our needs, but he also wants to teach us not to depend on our money or possessions. Some people are so anxious about money and wonder if they will have enough for tomorrow or the next day. They wonder how they can earn enough to finish their schooling or find enough to get established and get married and raise their own children. Jesus wants us to recognize that money is like the uncertainty of the rain. We cannot always predict when the rain will come, but we know that it will come because God always does send us his blessings. God is a faithful provider and we should trust in him, not for everything we want, but for the basic needs of food and clothing. If we are experiencing a time of financial drought, we might become very anxious, but this is the time when we need to trust in the Lord and call out to Him for help. The Lord knows all about our needs, and we can be assured that He loves us and will care for us today, tomorrow, and for all our tomorrows. The Lord does not forsake the righteous. Do remember that God does not owe you anything, but He provides for you because He loves you. Just as a father or mother loves their children and provides for them, or at least that is what we should expect from loving parents. God also will provide for his own children. God is infinitely more loving and faithful than our own parents, and so we should learn to trust in him fully. To doubt him is an insult to his faithful character and a denial of his love. While we speak about giving away our possessions or money for the Lord, we do well to remember that a characteristic of the Holy Spirit's work in the life of a believer is when they are led to be generous in their giving. Many Christians give generously of their money and time to help others and to spread the gospel. Many schools, hospitals, and orphanages have been built by the hard work and sacrifices of God's people. We may not be required to give up all our possessions, but the Spirit of God leads Christians to joyfully give because they delight to manifest God's love toward the needs of those around them. Giving should never be thought of as a dreaded obligation, but rather a joyful privilege. Christians who are fully dedicated to the Lord will not want to claim anything for their own selfish use knowing that this is not only contrary to the heart of Christ, but also disappointing to him who gave himself entirely for our well-being. 
I hope you will give to the Lord joyfully and not claim anything for yourself alone. Everything we have is a gift from God, not just for our selfish pursuits, but intended to be a blessing also to those around us. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9